The following program is sponsored by Happy Science. Hello and thank you for accepting our invitation to happiness. Ryuho Okawa is a global visionary, a renowned spiritual leader, and an international best-selling author. With his deep spiritual insight, wisdom, and compassion, Okawa is committed to guide people to true happiness and create a better world. To accomplish this, he founded Happy Science Group in Japan in 1986, which has become a global movement in over 100 countries. His vision and message to the world goes beyond the differences of race and language. Together, throughout this program, we will explore ways to attain true happiness through a spiritual perspective and how to create a better world starting from within. Recently, we have heard many accounts of people being able to cure themselves from illnesses. What was their secret? And is this something that is attainable for everyone? In this episode, we will talk about the mindsets that can conquer cancer. But before we begin the program, let's ask the people of New York whether they believe cancer is curable with the mindset. No, but I think your mindset has an awful lot to do to help conquering cancer. Yes, I'm not sure about, I don't know enough about cancer to say 100% yes, but I do think there are certain illnesses that you can conquer with your mind and with your willpower. Like there's been many instances I've found myself getting sick, but I tell myself I'm not going to and then I end up not. Um, so I'm not, like I said, I, I don't know enough research about cancer, but I do believe the, the mind has a lot of power over what your body undergoes. Yes, with positivity, you have to believe. Believe in God and believe in yourself. You can actually get it, definitely. I don't think you can 100% cure with your mindset, but I definitely think it goes a long way because if you think about stress, we can't measure stress. People either say they're stressed out or they're not, so we can't really measure it. So I definitely think a positive mindset will go towards helping. What do you think about conquering cancer? Let's hear from Okawa. Ways to Make Cancer Vanish is the title of this lecture. This is an unusual topic for me, and I have not talked much about it before, but it is a classic theme in the field of religion. In the car on my way here, I was talking with one of my secretaries who accompanied me. She said that she gave the book The Way to Definite Health to her grandfather. Although he does not usually read any happy science books, he somehow read that book. Then his dementia was medically cured. Thus, it shows that there are various ways as to which illnesses can be cured in what way. In most cases, because people are unaware of the cause of their illness, there is a strong tendency for an illness to be cured when the person finds out the reason himself. There are parts of our mind that we are not conscious of. If it is those parts that are causing the illness, the disease will begin to break away and be cured when you come to realize them through the guiding light of God's truth. After all, spiritual existence is the essence of human beings, and the spiritual existence that dwells in the physical body influences it. In fact, the spirit body is the master while the physical body is the subordinate. Ultimately, as stated in the Sutra, the Dharma of the Right Mind, the physical body is a shadow of the soul. If you shift the state of your mind to this perspective, changes will begin to appear in your physical body. Aside from the mild diseases that are commonly known, I believe about 70% of the severe diseases that affect our lives can even be cured to some extent. In the end, it is difficult to cure illnesses unless faith is established. Therefore, it is important to firstly consider whether one has established faith. In the New Testament, Jesus repeatedly said, do you believe that I am able to do this? He asked people if they had faith and said, It shall be done to you according to your faith. 
illnesses cannot be cured without an established faith. This is because not being able to have established faith proves the unwillingness to believe in something that is not of this world and of greater power beyond this world. Today, I would like to mention the following once again, just in case. Bad people get cancer, but good people do not, is not necessarily true. Even good people can develop cancer and die from it. These people are usually the ones who have a strong sense of responsibility. They take on demanding tasks, feel a lot of pressure, and often undergo suffering, distress, and mental conflicts. These sufferings, distress, and mental stress materialize and manifest themselves as illnesses. During such times, there are various ailments that can appear on the body, and one of the typical phenomena is cancer. In the case of cancer, a foreign object that should not exist according to the blueprint of the human body starts to grow. They take form in the internal organ. First, a tumor forms, and that tumor grows into cancer cells. However, it is a tumor only when a foreign object develops inside the body. If it develops outside the body, it is just a wart. A wart is something unnecessary for the body, and it is like toxin that the body wants to excrete and get rid of. Toxin becomes a wart when it is squeezed out of the body and is materialized. The same goes for foreign objects that form on the internal organs. The desire to excrete something toxic may ultimately be creating such lesions. Such lesions do not necessarily have to be recognized as cancer. If such toxins are excreted from the body in a different way, it will not necessarily be cancer. I have mentioned the psychological tendency of those who are likely to get cancer. I also gave words of reassurance that those who are prone to getting it are not necessarily bad people. However, I would like to point out that holding in too much anger will make it prone for people to get cancer. When one loses his temper and holds it in for too long, they are likely to get cancer. There is such a tendency. On the other hand, people who take their anger out directly often earn frowns by those around them. In this case, they themselves do not fall ill, but will make others sick instead. In addition, mental breakdowns such as failing exams or business, falling out of love, and getting involved in accidents can also cause illness. When people experience these types of mental breakdowns, they unknowingly try to become ill and look for any part of the body that is vulnerable to a disease, resulting in some illness manifesting itself on the area. In the case of cancer, it is usually triggered by being confronted with distress through unfavorable incidents in life and the desire for self-destruction grows and progresses on a subconscious level. It may sound harsh, but these people are not consciously thinking about destroying their body, but deep down in their subconscious mind, they are actually trying to do so in order to protect their pride. If a person refuses to make a mistake, such kind of thing happens. The same goes for the issues between men and women. Poor marital relationships can often cause cancer. In such cases, women are very likely to develop breast or uterus cancer. Accumulation of negative emotions such as harboring inner conflicts resulting from marital quarrels and discord for a long period of time can allow cancer cells to develop in female organs. Struggling between the choice of getting married and having children and the desire to continue working at a job may at times make it susceptible to develop cancer, including breast cancer. 
In such cases, illness can create a reason for these people to abandon the idea of getting married. This kind of thing happens when they subconsciously desire to hold on to their careers. Marital problems and conflicts between parents and children can cause uterine disease, resulting from the retaliation of anger and accumulated dissatisfaction between husband and wife, or parents and children. In a sense, illness is an SOS signal or warning sign from our bodies. In another sense, our bodies are educating us about our mistaken mindset. By doing so, they are protecting us. An illness is actually trying to protect our pride. When our pride is damaged, we become discouraged and lose enthusiasm to move forward. When we refuse to acknowledge the fact that things did not go well in work or personal relationships because of our own lack of ability and talent, our bodies will try to communicate those feelings instead. As a consequence, an illness can organically develop. After all, the problems that lie in our heart are expressed onto our bodies. Our heart is like an artist. As it draws a picture on a white canvas, it expresses its will on our body. Humans have minds that are conscious and subconscious. The subconscious mind is the one signaling to us about the changes in our bodies and illnesses. Especially as we grow older and find ourselves less useful to others, we tend to subconsciously seek for illness as a refuge. In order to defend ourselves from being blamed by those around us, an illness starts to form as a form of self-protection. And once we fall ill, we tend to moan and groan to others because we lose control of our own bodies. So this is what I think. This world is not very much liberated and we cannot control everything. There are many things that do not work out the way we want them to. Therefore, I believe it is better to accept this fact as much as possible. Okawa states that 70% of illnesses can be cured by changing and improving our mindsets. As children of God, we, human beings, have been equipped with the same creative power as our Father, God, the Creator. This means that we innately have the power to cure illness, even cancer. This is a great hope for all of us. Nowadays, it's easy to become skeptic and depend solely on medicine. However, we must listen to our bodies and pay attention to what it tells us. Ultimately, faith has the strongest impact on healing illness, even cancer. Let's continue with Okawa's lecture. After all, what is it that we should do to make cancer vanish? Most cancers are caused by inner suffering and conflicts triggered by entangled personal relationships. In life, like a difficult jigsaw puzzle, there are probably a large number of problems that may seem impossible to solve. If we struggle with such problems, cancer is highly likely to form. Of course, there are some problems that can be solved easily, while others are not that simple. But in this world, even though the problem cannot be solved right away, there are many problems that can be solved over the course of time. This is something that we must accept as a fact and be willing and determined to persevere through them. Life is not always filled with favorable winds, nor does it promise success all the time. But the important mindset here is to skillfully write out the adversities. I am sure you have been on the receiving end of various poisonous darts from others. But since it is their choice to release poison, there is nothing that can be done. However, you must make sure that you are not affected too much by them. There are many people who throw poisonous darts in this world, and we cannot control them. It will require a tremendous amount of energy from us to stop them from doing so. 
Nonetheless, you have the choice of not letting yourself being affected by them. Of course, it is difficult to stay completely unaffected by all the negativities, but we must learn to let them go even if we have been shot by poison and not let them take root in our hearts. Please keep your mind and heart in a state that flows like clear water in a stream. Try not to make the problem bigger than they actually are. At the end of the day, simply put, as long as we can develop the mindset of accepting the worst-case scenario, we can get through tough times in life. What would be the worst-case scenario for people with cancer? It would be death. And for that reason, I have published many books that explain in detail about life after death, that are readily available for you to study. Those who are uncertain of what will happen after death will probably fear death when the time approaches. However, we have already provided a good amount of knowledge about life after death at Happy Science. Things which have not been proven in the field of medicine, such as the world after death, have already been well explained in the world of religion. Before the time of death, we are given the time to prepare for the entrance exam of entering into the other world. We must get prepared and raise our scores while we are still here so that we can cross over to the other world happily. We must do our best until the final moment of our lives. Cancer may lead us to death. However, the truth is, all of us die in the end. No one can live eternally. So if you find that your time here on earth is nearly up, accept the reality and work hard to spend the rest of your life in a way that will increase your life score. Now, I would like to point out a few simple steps to conquer cancer. First, have gratitude in your heart. Those who have cancer often lack the heart of gratitude. People who are not so grateful toward their parents appear to be more receptive to developing cancer. This is an unknown cause. Please generate gratitude toward your family, friends, acquaintances, Dharma friends, and various people around you. This is one of the most important points. Another important point is to reflect on the past as best as you can. Please try to reflect and examine your past thoughts and actions to the best of your ability. As for personal relationships, it is important to reconcile relationships if possible. As for relationships that are not possible to mend, please pray in your mind, for example, you can apologize in your mind by saying, Dear so-and-so, I am sorry for all my carelessness and when I went too far and hurt you. I am really sorry. Or, pray for the other person's happiness. In this way, please practice gratitude, self-reflection, and prayer. Lastly, train yourself to smile as much as possible. A smile can cure cancer, so try to have more smiles on your face. Smiling is the magic bullet for treating cancer. Unfortunately, when we don't smile enough, we become prone to falling ill. Therefore, please try to smile more often. A smile is an expression of love toward others. When you become an elderly person with a pleasant smile, you will be loved by others, and if you are loved, that love will serve as a therapeutic medicine that gives you the power to relieve your worries and cure your illness. In life, there are various incidents which cause distress and sufferings, but we should always try to focus on happiness and try to smile as much as we can. Generate the heart of gratitude for what we are already blessed with. Rather than counting what's lacking, give thanks to what you are already given. This attitude is very important. Generally speaking, generating gratitude towards your parents and the practice of self-reflection are needed. Furthermore, reconcile any broken relationships if possible. If that is not possible, apologize to others in your mind through prayer. Lastly, always make an effort to smile as a remedy. Please use these steps to conquer cancer. It may sound difficult to believe, but these steps are actually more effective than the medications prescribed at hospitals. It doesn't cost a penny. So please take my words with an open heart and give them a try. It 
will work. On top of this, please acknowledge that the ultimate medicine is faith. The stronger our belief gets, the greater number of diseases will be cured. I sincerely pray that all of you will establish faith as the most powerful and ultimate remedy. Please believe that there is no disease that cannot be cured. Thank you very much. Please strongly believe that with our mindsets, together with faith, we can conquer cancer. Along with vital mindsets that are mentioned in this book, How to Conquer Cancer, please believe that God is not forsaking you with illness or cancer. God and angels are watching over you, especially when you're suffering in the midst of despair and praying for your recovery. To do this, we need to do our part by changing our mindsets for the positive. This is the fastest road to healing. And please remember that faith is the almighty cure for everything, including cancer. Lastly, in Okawa's lecture in New York in October 2016, in a question and answer session, Master answers the following question. How can terminally ill patients stay positive and cure illness? Let's hear the answer he gave. To tell the truth, uh, in Japan, uh, we made uh, hundreds of, or uh, thousands of miracles uh, uh, in, in the area of uh, illness or uh, terminal or uh, illness. Uh, uh, when you believe in strongly uh, in the power of heaven, uh, I am a channel uh, from heaven. Uh, if you ask seriously, believe in uh, El Cantare or believe in happy science, uh, higher spirits, uh, Please give life from heaven. Ask them. Uh, you don't need Obamacare at the time, so uh, it's cheap. Uh, if you have uh, great faith in you, uh, if you can confirmly believe in God or uh, light of the heaven, of the light of heaven and the power of miracle, now you can experience, of course, God is alive, God is living, God's power is effective. The main point is human is what he or she is thinking about the thought First thinking in you is most important thing. This is a seeds of flowers. The seeds define what kind of color or size of flower will flourish uh, in the near future. You must require your seeds for prosperity, your seeds for uh, your health, uh, and seeds for your uh, family uh, good condition. So the deepness of uh, faith is very important. At Happy Science, you can listen to Okawa's other lectures related to today's topic and find many books. We also offer many teachings related to the mind, body, and soul, including workshops and healing meditations at our locations. We also offer ritual prayers for recovery from illness and prayer for health. For more information, please contact a Happy Science location near you. If you'd like to learn more about Okawa and the teachings of Happy Science, visit invitationtohappiness.org or call us at one 800 710 7777. Once again, thank you for accepting our invitation to happiness. Join us next week as we continue our journey to happiness with the topic, How to Resolve Religious Conflicts. 
See you next time. Believe that your true nature is strong and healthy. For your power to heal will be fortified by your sense of hope, determination, and the power of spiritual truths. Healing from within. Life-changing keys to calm, spiritual, and healthy living. This book uh, deals with things that modern medicine doesn't. Modern medicine deals with physical symptoms. Doctors tell you terrible things so they won't be blamed in case something terrible happens. <laughs> but what this book does is explains to you beyond eating properly, sleeping enough, and um, getting, in, getting enough rest, getting enough sleep. Most people don't even do that. And then they wonder why they're sick. But beyond that, that's the physical third dimensional part, which Master talks about also. Your mind, how you think, what you think about other people, anger, family squabbles, all these things contribute to your health. And you cannot blame anyone else for your illness. You are responsible. And it may not be in this life. It could be from a past life. These are all things that come out in healing from within. And so I would recommend this book to people because it gives you the tools. The preceding program was sponsored by Happy Science.